can't believe I'm doing this to myself, but today I'm going to be ranking Nevermore's seven full-length studio albums. In case you don't know, Nevermore is a metal band from Seattle, Washington, USA. If you haven't listened to them, you definitely should. Let's dive right in with their first album, self-titled Nevermore, from 1995. They just came in really strong. And I think it's because most of them, if not all of them, had experience being in bands before. Like this wasn't a teenage formed band. It's freaking good. I love Watch More Knows, The Sandy Assassin. I love CBF oh, and God Money. Oh, this is a spectacular album. You know, like a lot of Nevermore, it, ha it carries this like huge burden um, for the world, for the state of things, for the future of humanity. It it's just heavy. It's heavy lyrically. It's heavy in mood, and it's heavy music. But I'm I'm just not sure how things are gonna play out. So I'm gonna put Nevermore 1995 in the position number four for now. Following that, we have Politics of Ecstasy from 1996. This is a lot like the self-titled album in terms of like quality and mood and tone, at least in my perspective. This album has a very like metallic and rusty sort of sound to it. There's really like no bad tracks here. It has this sort of like panic and chaotic tone. Really, really heavy, just prime nevermore. I love Next In Line. That's probably my favorite from this album, but I also love Passenger as this like really heavy ballad. I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna say I prefer Nevermore 1995 over Politics of Ecstasy. So I'm gonna put Politics of Ecstasy at number five for now. And next is Dreaming Neon Black. And this is where Nevermore really starts to get emotional and like sad, <laughs> but at the same time, just maintaining that heaviness. Deconstruction is one of the first songs I ever heard by Nevermore and I freaking love it. How it starts out so slow and then get so, so freaking heavy. And then of course, Dreaming Neon Black as a soft song is really beautiful. Oh, and then a Poison God Machine kicks ass. But you know what? <laughs> I think I'm gonna put it at number six. <laughs> it seems so wrong. And next we have Dead Heart in a Dead World. And man, did I wear this one into the ground. This is a really, really wonderful album with a lot of songs on it too. Um, I really like, oh, The River Dragon Has Come. Oh. And I used to listen to The Heart Collector all the time and insignificant insignificant and believe in nothing my god i haven't elaborated too much on these albums but Warl dane's lyrics are nihilistic yet so infused with emotion i think <laughs> he had way too much of an influence on me when i was young but i just found so much solace in his voice and his lyrics but you know despite the seriousness of this band they still knew how to have a little bit of fun. Uh, Whirl always picked really interesting songs to cover, like The Sound of Silence here on this album. But yeah, I would also say that this album is where the musicianship, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the musicianship really got more of a spotlight put on it. Um, they started just like experimenting a little bit more. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna put Dead Heart in a Dead World at Number three. Next we have the enemies of reality. This is where I came in. This is where I started listening to Nevermore. The first Nevermore song I ever, ever heard being Never Purified. I know they weren't happy with how this was initially mixed and mastered. I didn't know the difference because I had just discovered metal in the first place, but it was kind of like a dirty sound, if that makes sense. Um, this, this album kicks ass. I Voyager also, oh my gosh, I forgot to put on my finger armor. I mean, World Dane and that I Voyager video is the whole reason why I wanted finger armor. We'll put you, we'll put you right here. 
and only recently have I accumulated some thrifted finger armor so now I feel like Worrell as a vampire. Who decides? It's one of my favorites. Tomorrow turned into yesterday. The ballads. I don't know, man. Seed Awakening, though. Enemies of Reality. I love the whole album, okay? I, this is an easy choice. Enemies of Reality is going to go at number two. Next, we have This Godless Endeavor. That is number one. That's number one. It might even be number one of my whole life of any band ever. I am obsessed with this album. I actually bought it like right after it came out when I was in high school. It is just a freaking masterpiece. I don't even need to name out all of the songs, okay? Because every single song is a favorite song potential. Every single song, it's just, you know, you might have a day where you're like, man, I really want to listen to Sentient Six, or man, I really want to listen to A Future Uncertain. Like, every single song stands alone as a really, really strong track. This was never more at their peak. And it just, the way it culminates in that title track that is just so supreme, it's just like a, an epic. It's just so perfect. I, I really think the stars aligned when this album was made and I'm just so glad it exists. Definitely, definitely one of my top five favorite albums on this planet. And finally, we have The Obsidian Conspiracy from 2010. That was five years between albums. I was um, impatiently waiting. But when this album finally came out, I was very excited. I remember going to the mall and buying it and just being super stoked. And very quickly, I realized it was not, it was not this godless endeavor. Um, the band had peaked and now it was going down the decline on the other side. And I think deep down, I don't know if maybe I had been reading something about the band, but I think deep down I knew that it was like, coming to the end. Something just wasn't right here. I do love Emptiness Unobstructed. That's a fabulous song. And I also like the title track, The Obsidian Conspiracy, but I just didn't click with it. So The Obsidian Conspiracy is gonna go down at number seven. And I can't believe I didn't have to rearrange anything. So to recap, we have This Godless Endeavor from 2005 at number freaking one. We have The Enemy's Reality from 2003 at number two. Dead Heart and Adele World coming in at number three. Nevermore from 1995 coming in at number four. Politics of Ecstasy from 1996 at number five. Dreaming Neon Black from 1999 at number six. And The Obsidian Conspiracy from 2010 coming in dead last at number seven. <laughs> Nevertheless, I freaking love this band and I'm pretty sure I always will. RIP to World Dane, I'm just Really sad that there's not gonna be any more Nevermore or Whirl. I thought about adding his Sanctuary albums and his solo albums into this ranking list, but I just decided not to. This band is really kind of weird. They don't really fit in with other bands and other genres. They always are, were just kind of an outlier, but I just really, really love the sound. I love Whirl's voice and I love the heaviness, but I also love the emotion and the softness that came out of some of the songs and just like, the master musicianship just made it all feel super badass. And I'm not really a lyrics person, but growing up I really did resonate with these lyrics. <laughs> Even though now I want to say I'm in a bit more of a happy place. <laughs> I never got to see Nevermore in concert. In 2011, they had announced they were gonna go on tour with Soil Work. And I was like, okay, great, I'm going. And then it was like just after that, Nevermore broke up. My dream of seeing Nevermore never got to come true, but what can you do? All right, I think I kind of blew through that. <laughs> I'm still figuring out how to pace these, but let me know how you would rearrange if you agree or wildly disagree with me on something. And thank you very much.